Hello, my name is Carmen Imes. I'm Associate Professor of Old Testament at Biola University's Talbot School of Theology. Welcome back for another Torah Tuesday. Today we're in Exodus chapter 20, verse 17, concluding our study of the Ten Commandments. I'll begin by reading my own translation from the Hebrew. You must not desire the house of your neighbor. You must not desire the wife of your neighbor, or his male servant, or his female servant, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Now, technically, uh, by my count, there are two commands here. The, the command not to covet your neighbor's house, and then all of the, the um, people who are attached to that house, people and objects attached to that house is a, is a second command. And that explains how we come up with 10 commands. If you remember from the beginning of this series, I include verses two through six as the first command rather than the first two commands. So this is how we get to 10. The word for covet here or desire is the Hebrew word hamad which is a craving that leads to action. Wrongful desire is the root of every other sin. So reading from James in the New Testament, chapter one, verses 14 and 15, we see that desire is the root of every other sin. Uh, it says, each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. And then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. Nobody wakes up in the morning and just does something, uh, say commits adultery or steals something from their neighbor without first mulling over it and deciding that's something they want. So it's having a desire for your neighbor's property, wanting what your neighbor has that gives birth to actions against your neighbor whereby you actually take that property for yourself. Leon Cass says it this way, if you do not covet the things that are your neighbors, you will be less likely to steal, commit adultery, or even murder. You will be less tempted to make your neighbor suffer harm or loss by bearing false witness against him. We could put it this way. Uh, I heard this years and years ago, and I think it's so true. Happy is the one who wants what they have. If we can cultivate a contentedness and gratitude for what God has provided for us, rather than stoking our angst over what we don't have, we would be much happier people and we would be much less likely to sin in these ways. The word house in this command, do not covet your neighbor's house, uh, refers to the household at large, everything that belongs to the household. The, the people of Israel don't have land yet when the commands are given at Sinai. And so it's interesting that it's in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 18, when the Ten Commandments are repeated to the next generation, that the word field is added. They don't have any fields when they're at Mount Sinai. What we see in this list of what we're not supposed to covet are typical legal categories. We see the same list in an Ugaritic royal grant, which talks about what is being given. And we see them as well in a trade treaty between Assyria and Anatolia, that prohibits coveting these same categories as well. So we have a, a kind of wider legal uh, tradition that considers these are the items of value attached to your neighbor's property that you are not supposed to covet. Dan Block notices that in Deuteronomy 5, when Moses reiterates these commands to the next generation, that the wife is elevated to the top of the list, giving her her own line item. There's a kind of elevation of the wife. She's not just a member of the household or a piece of property, but she's actually worthy of her own command. But that doesn't completely erase our discomfort with servants being on the list. These servants are laborers attached to another person's household, and you shouldn't be coveting like, oh, wow, they get a lot of work done over there because they have these people who can do this labor. If I had those people working for me, imagine what I could accomplish. That's a form of coveting that is problematic. Notice that the focus on the heart in this command brings matters outside the realm of court jurisdiction. You can't try someone's heart in court and find out what their motivation is, whether they have been coveting. Only Yahweh knows our hearts. And Jesus seems to recognize the importance of this command 
In his Sermon on the Mount, he reads all 10 commands through the lens of these last commands against coveting because he talks about the heart matter of all the commands. He says, you've heard that it was said, do not commit adultery, but I tell you, anyone who looks lustfully at a woman has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So adultery begins with lust, which is a kind of desire. Murder begins with hatred, which is a kind of desire. We could say today that um, adultery begins with pornography, which cultivates a lust for someone else who is not my spouse. This is also true with celebrity crushes. Somehow we have this category that we, we don't think is, uh, is a problem. It's just kind of like a innocuous uh, crush on someone who is like a movie star. And so we, teenagers tend to put up posters of their favorite movie stars and they're just like swooning over them. Uh, this is problematic according to the Ten Commandments. We should not be lusting after someone with whom we have no hope of a personal relationship. Uh, we, this is not a potential spouse for us. Uh, if you're a teenager thinking about uh, this celebrity, like you are not going to marry that celebrity and should not be cultivating a kind of desire for that person. Proverbs 4.23 warns us that we need to guard our hearts because everything we do flows from our hearts. So this week, I would encourage you to think about the state of your heart and what you are longing for, whether it's something that belongs to someone else or something that God has not yet provided for you. If we can cultivate contentedness and gratitude, we will be much less likely to act in ways that violate the Ten Commandments. Have a great week. 